Hi gang, it's 5 to 3 in the afternoon on Sunday the 5th of October 2014. The Grand Shrine between Mars in Sagittarius, Uranus in Aries, Jupiter in Leo is firmly and strongly in place. The T-square of the Sun opposite Uranus with both of them square to Pluto is now strongly and firmly in place. The pattern is ready. There is a kite with the sun at the head of the Grand Shrine. There is the Grand Shrine. There is a T-square. And all of these are around for three or four days. And so we await the entrance of the moon. The moon is now in early Pisces and will be there for the next two days. And it will get bigger and bigger in the sky. And then... On Tuesday, it will be eclipsed in mid-Aries. Just as it passes over Uranus. And all of a sudden, unfettered Uranian energy will come through. Into that pattern, it will enliven it. It will create some wonderful new stimulus. Be sure of it in months to come. Innovation, invention and novelty will be traced back to this time. Be also sure that this is the final, not so much nail in the coffin, but crack in the eggshell. This is Pluto in Capricorn of the more challenging type. The caterpillar being forced to turn into the butterfly, the snake shedding its skin by compression. If it weren't for Pluto, this would be a wonderful new moon. As it is, it's a real stinker. Uh, full moon, I'm sorry. As it is, it's a real stinker. Even with the eclipse, with Uranus, I still wouldn't mind so much if it weren't for the Pluto square. Because of this, and because of the large number of planets involved in this pattern, I think even Venus might be getting involved later, quite close to it as well. It seems that this new moon, this full moon, I'm sorry, this full moon eclipse is going to impact not so much on the personal level, except with some, more on the global level. I've named the people whom I think will be most affected by this particular full moon eclipse. I'm sure there's lots more whose charts I simply haven't had the time to study. But this eclipse is falling on, for example, Putin's Sun Saturn midpoint, Cameron's Sun Gordon Brown's ascendant, Farage's son. There's going to be political carnage over the coming month or so. It also is going to have a strong effect on certain individuals, and perhaps I'll cover that one later today, or ask first thing tomorrow, with regard to specific birthdays. But anyone, look, this isn't just an eclipse, right? It's not just an eclipse in a magnificent pattern conjuncting Uranus. It is the Grand Cross, part four. Go back to the start of January, the first two weeks of January. Those of you who got hit then, it's the start of a process, which as the Grand Cross hit in the third and fourth week of April, reached its most manic and disruptive and volatile. And then in mid-late July, it began to hit its peak. And there's certainly many people whom over August and September, and myself, it has to be said, who thought that come August, September, okay, Grand Cross is over. Wrong. It's come back now. The eclipse of October the 8th, 2014 is directly linked to the Grand Cross pattern of January, April and July and this is seen as a major aftershock yielding new big results. In itself it is not representative of huge change except in the charts of various leaders. It is seen as the next step on a long course of process change of which the final one the fifth and final part of the Grand Cross 
will come after the Mercury retrograde is finished on November the 11th, November the 12th, when Mars conjuncts Pluto at 11 and 12 degrees of Capricorn. That will be the end of the Grand Cross. But now, now we're off a diving ball, we're spinning, turning, bending, trying to get the angle just right so that when penetration comes, it is precise, that there is no ripple, and that everything is incisive. This Mercury retrograde feels a lot easier. How can I say that? But it's, it's true. Everyone I'm speaking to in the last few hours, the last 24 hours says, oh, thank goodness Mercury's gone retrograde. This we know where we stand now. It's not the fusion. Breath holding time, folks. Cup in 24 hours, 36 hours, I'm going to be saying, right, hold your breath for three days. Okay. I'll try and do something later today, and if not, it'll be first thing on the morning on who's actually being affected by the eclipse of October the 8th. Till then, catch you later. Bye.